Shalom Israel, Shalom, Shalom, Brother Marquas. Right, I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahusha. Shalom to all the saints out there doing the work, fervent, steadfast in the spirit, reading, praying, studying, doing everything they can to do to beseech the Most High of His mercies. All right, again, all praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahusha. It's going to be a quick video on uh, beseeching the Lord through the spirit. It's going to be a quick video on to continually beseech the Most High for His grace, for His mercies, and also to beseech the Most High in all things. Whether that's uh, trials or tribulations, you beseech the Most High. Whether you're at your highest point, so-called at your highest point in life, when you feel like you're on top of the world, you're beseeching the Most High. When you feel like you're at your lowest, still always continually to beseech the Most High in all things. All right, I want to kick it off with Psalms 121. Cause some you got you got uh, you got certain people that only beseech the Most High in their own season. All right, when they're low, that's when they only pray to the Lord. When they uh, rent got to be paid, uh, child support money come in, damn they just uh, down bad. That's the only time you pray to the Most High. But yet when you're at your highest, you don't call upon the Most High. You just forget about him, like he's just some uh, genie, like brother say. All right, again the Most High, the Most High is not a genie where you can just call upon him whenever you want. And he answers just like that. And you're rubbing that the, uh, that nasty uh, that nasty gold container. And you're waiting for damn blue smoke to come out and to give you your wishes. No, that's not the Most High. You want to pray to the Most High and beseech him again in all seasons and in all things. All right, this Psalms chapter 121 and verse number 1. All right, this Psalms 121 and verse 1. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence my help come. My help cometh from Yahweh, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel will not sleep. It's like he that keep he that keepeth thee will not slumber. You see that? And so the Lord said, I'm a, the point is verse 2. It says, My my help cometh from Yahweh, which made heaven and earth. So you want to realize where your help comes from. All right, your help doesn't come from the carnal things, right? Smoking a blunt, calling this woman, getting drunk. No, your help comes from Yahweh. So if the Most High is your help and your God and the fixer of all things, why not call upon him in all seasons? All right, let's go to the book of Psalms 50 and 15, the classic. Let's go to Psalms chapter 50 and verse number 15, the classic. All right, this Psalms chapter 50 and verse 15. It says, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. It says, call upon the Most High in the day of trouble. That day of trouble is not always talking about the day of the Lord or Jacob's trouble. No, the day of trouble can be any day. All right, you damn, uh, uh, you, you, like I said earlier, you damn low in your rent. Whatever situation that you're in where you're at your so-called lowest, that's where you're supposed to call on the Most High. All right, and again, it's not, it's not just when you're at your lowest, but again, when you're at your highest. All right, there's no account of King David only calling upon the most high at his lowest. All right, on, uh, King King Solomon, Hezekiah, Josiah. Right, Lord, when we go on a tour, you had uh, Hezekiah. He called upon the most high in his lowest and in his highest. All right, again, so you want to self-examine and watch your spirit on how you're beseeching the Lord and what spirit you're moving in, in the last days. Let me read that again. Psalms 50 and verse 15. It says, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. He didn't say, I might deliver thee. It's a 50-50 chance I might deliver thee. No, he said, call upon me, and I will deliver thee, man. And with that comes faith. All right, that comes faith. That comes uh, confidence. Because God forbid you just call upon the Most High, and you don't believe in the Most High. Just yelling for vanity. No, when you call upon the Lord, you have to have ever sure confidence, like how Judas Maccabee said. Let's get that real quick. Second Maccabees 15. And verse number 7. All right, quick precept. Second Maccabees chapter 15 and verse number 7. It said, But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that Yahweh would help him. And that got to be your mindset right there, too. We have ever sure confidence. We have ever sure confidence. I mean, nothing can stop you. Confidence in itself is a powerful uh, word, let alone ever short confidence. So a Jewish Maccabeus through the spirit, 
He said he had ever sure confidence that the Most High would help him. When you call upon the Lord, do you have ever sure confidence? Or are you weary? Are, are you praying while thinking about uh, vain things? Here you go, you want to fast. You throwing up prayers and you keep, you keep uh, meditating upon donuts while you're praying. That's off. Are you meditating upon uh, that commercial, that full commercial that you watched earlier? You got that stuck in your head as you're trying to beseech the most out of the Lord's not hearing that. No, so when you pray, you want to have that ever short confidence that the Lord is always with you. All right, let's go to Psalms 145. Let's go to Psalms chapter 145. All right, this is Psalms chapter 145 and verse number 17. It says, Yahweh is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Yahweh is nigh unto all them that call upon him. Hey, so the Most High, he's nigh to those men and women that call upon him. All right, and like brothers, uh, brothers also always say, you, you don't want to pray uh, once a day, three times a week. No, you want to at least throw up, brothers say, you know, uh, five to seven prayers a day. All right? Five to seven prayers a day. You want to be constantly throwing those up. Why? I'm going to read that again. It says, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. So the more you call upon the Most High, the closer the Lord is going to be to you. As long as you call upon him in truth and in sincerity, the Lord, that's a thats a closer relationship and bond that you're building with the Most High. Read it on. It says, to all that call upon him in truth. Right? It said, to all that call upon him in truth. And again, you, you don't want to be calling upon the Most High in, uh, in vanity. You're just beseeching the Most High for a new pet, a new dog. Going on a three-day fast so the Most High can bless you with uh, five wives, seven wives, and ten, uh, ten children. That's off. All right, that's off. You want to make sure that you call upon the Most High in truth and in a fervent spirit. That's like, um, that's like when you were younger and you had your parents. Are right? you asking your parents a thousand times for a damn uh, toy? Now, they may say no the first two times, but the minute you're diligent, you start doing what they say, you start uh, uh, practicing the things that you're already supposed to be doing before they tell you. And you keep asking, eventually they're going to bless you with it. Let's go to Luke 18 real quick. Let's go to Luke 18 and verse number one. So the more you call upon the most high in truth and in sincerity, one, that's a stronger relationship that you're building with the Lord. On another fold, that's a better chance of you getting what you pray for as well. This is the book of Luke chapter 18. I'm going to just start at verse 2. I'm going to read I'm gonna read verse 1. It says, Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and to not faint, saying there was a, it's like it. it says, saying there was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. So Yahweh Shaz wants to put forth this parable, right? It was a city. And within the city, you had a judge that didn't fear the Most High. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said, with, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Least by her continual coming, she weary me. So the Lord put forth this parable on a judge that doesn't believe in the Most High. Yet this widow, she continually came to this judge day in and day out, week in and week out, to have this judge adventure of her adversary. But guess what? He said, you know what? I don't, I don't believe in God. I damn sure don't respect man. But just because this woman is continually beseeching me, I'm going to give her what she wants. And on the right hand side, that's how the Lord is. All right, the Lord is not just gonna uh, neglect you if you're doing the right things. I right, know the Lord, He's gonna, the more you beseech, like I said, the more you beseech Him, the more chance your prayer is gonna be uh, heard on a higher level. All right, verse six, it says, And the Lord said, Hear the unjust judge saith, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge His own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though 
he bear along with them. So the Lord said he's going to avenge his own elect that cry day and night unto him. So if you want to make your calling and your election sure, if you want to be a part of the elect, the Lord said that the elect are crying day and night unto him. Right? The elect is just not throwing up a, a, a prayer before they eat. Right? God is good. God is great. Let them thank us for our food. Amen. Thank you, baby Jesus. No. Right? You guys more it's more to just it's more than just thanking baby Jesus. Alright? The elect is crying day and night unto the most high. If you're not crying day and night, you gotta ask yourself, are you really are you really the elect? And again, to make your calling and your election sure, you want to make sure you're going through the precepts and lining up what the elect is doing. You want to match yourself with them to make your calling and your election sure, which means you have to be praying day and night with confidence, studying, week in and week out, continually beseeching the Most High. All right, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel 31. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse number one. Let's get an account. Right, of our mighty ancestor, King David. All right, this is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, and verse number 1. It says, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, and the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag and Smen Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were, the, that were therein, they slew not any either great nor small, but carried them away and went on their way. So when David and his men were uh, occupying the city, you have the Amalekites, they came in and they besieged the city of Ziklag. So the so-called white man came in and all hell broke loose. And they took every woman and every child captive. All right, it says, verse three. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept. Right? And they, and you know, rightfully so, because their wives and their children were kidnapped by the so-called white man. So when they came back to the city, the city all burnt up, the children going, the wives missing, the men wept. All right? It says, what do you know? It's a lot good. It says, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ah, it's like a, a Hanuma, right? It's like for the pronunciation, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. That's the point. So when all hell is breaking loose, it said David was greatly distressed. And again, David is king at this time. David is not uh, some average Joe that's still under the dominion of King Saul, right? So David. The one who's everyone looking at, the one who's everyone leaning upon for comfort and help and for judgment, they're beseeching David at the moment. It said, David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. And so you had David's day one man. You read Psalms, the one, you read Psalms chapter 101, right? You read um, 1 Kings, the first chapter. You had a certain man that was with David since he was a youth. Man that was perfect, always about him, round, round about him. So you had David's day one men that spake of stone in him after he was already greatly distressed. You have to imagine that anguish and the grief that was, and the pressure that was put upon King David. Here it is, you're greatly distressed, mind racing, trying to figure out what's going on. And on top of that, your own family, your brothers, they speaking about stoning you, man, killing you, putting you to death because of this situation. So the minds of the people that he was around at this point, I mean, they was bad. They didn't call upon the Lord. All right? They didn't uh, throw up a prayer. They didn't exhort him. They did the exact opposite, and they spake of putting King David to death. So this is a very big deal when you read this chapter. All right, it says, For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. I mean, and if anyone was put in King David position, they probably would have uh, damn just just gave into the grief. All right, they would have damn. Shh, let me think. All right, would have just gave up. All right, let me go back into the world. Let me go back to the village and just do my own thing. Everybody already against me. I might as well quit. Right, that give up spirit. But let's see what David did. It says, but David encouraged himself and the Lord his God, and that's the point. It said David encouraged himself 
and the Lord his God. So when all things when, uh, when all things was uh, breaking hell and going completely left, the mind, David's mind was on the Most High. David was beseeching the Lord. He was remembering the accounts, remembering the ordinances. And guess what? He ended up encouraging himself in the Lord. And you may be at a point in time in your life where it's only you and the Most High. Everybody's against you. Nobody's answering the phone when you need that precept. And sometimes you just got to encourage your own self in the Lord, man. Sometimes a video not always going to do it, right? Sometimes you hitting up a brother is not always going to do it. At one at one point, it has to be just you and the Most High, to, and the Most High is going to have you and him alone just get through it, like how David was in this position. David couldn't ask them to pray for him, all right, go on a fast with him, help him make a right judgment and counsel to see what they should do. No, David had to lean upon the Most High when everyone, literally everyone was against him. All right, and again, that got to be our mindset. Whatever, whatever is going on in your life and you feel like you're at your lowest, again, you have to encourage your own self in the Lord. Don't expect anyone else to encourage you and to always build you up. It's good to have exhortation. It's good to have videos and brothers and sisters to call upon. But again, your main, uh, your main power source is for you to go to the Most High yourself. How? Through prayer, through fasting, through encouraging yourself in the Lord and through beseeching the Most High, always right and truth and in sincerity like we read in psalms 145 all right let's go to the book of Tobit, chapter 3 and verse number 7 let's go to the book of Tobit, chapter 3 and verse number 7 let me see what i want all right Tobit 3 and 7 it says and it came to pass the same day that in Ecbatana, a city of Midian, Sarah, the daughter of Reguel, was also reproached by her father's maids. Right? So you have uh, you have Sarah, right? Sarah, the daughter of Reguel. Now, when you read and you uh, when we read about Sarah, you see she had these different husbands because every time she laid down with a man, the husband ended up giving up the ghost. Right? So it was never her fault, but yet you had men, we was just gonna say it, you had men that was uh, making fun of her, calling her a whore, uh, uh, falsely accusing her, and you know how Jake is, right? You know, just same average uh, Negro Jake, trying to bake everybody all the time, in the wrong season. So reading on, it says, verse eight, because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom as Modeus, the evil spirit had killed before they had before they had lain with her, those thou not know, said they that thou hast strangled thine husbands, thou hast already seven husbands, neither was thou named after any of them. So they're just getting on her unrighteously. Why you had seven husbands and you took none of their names. All right, just going in. Verse 9. It says, Therefore, dost thou dost thou beat us for them? If they be dead, go thy way after them. And let us never see of thee either son or daughter. I'm going to jump down to verse number uh, 12. Right, jumping down to verse 12. It says, And now, O Lord, I send my eyes and my face toward thee. So as all hell is breaking loose, the first thing that she did was call upon the Most High. All right, because again, when you, when you uh, falsely accuse someone in the ancient world, that was a big deal. All right, if your name was stained in the ancient world, that was a very big deal. You read um, Deuteronomy, the 25th chapter. If you didn't go and take your brother's wife after your brother was put to death, having no son, right, no children, guess what? You would be called a Lushu, and you would get spit in your face because you would be found a disgrace within your nation, and you have an ill name. So you having an ill name in the ancient world was a very big deal. That's what you uh, read about in History of Susanna. When everyone was falsely accusing Susanna and calling her a whore, getting ready to stone her uh, falsely. Why? Because in the ancient world, we had these different uh, things placed on your name, just like now in the truth. All right, God forbid uh, a mighty elder in his truth commits adultery, and his name's going to be stained. And everyone is going to be looking at who once was a high man be brought low. Because again, the most high he deals with you, ex you extolling your name and righteousness through the spirit and power of the Most High. And once you break that, 
your name becomes stained. So, I mean, this is a big deal. So as she's going through this chastisement and this uh this false rebuke and these lies, the first thing that she did, I'm gonna read it again. It says, And now, O Yahweh, I set mine eyes and my face toward thee. The first thing she did was call upon the most high. Pray to the Lord. It says, verse 13, and say, Take me out the earth that I may bear no more the reproach. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man, and that I never polluted my name. For the name of my father and the land of my uh, captivity, I am the only daughter of my father. Neither had he any child to me. It's like child to be his heir. Neither any near kinsman nor any son of his alive. To whom I may keep myself for a wife. My seven husbands are already dead. And why should I live? And this is what you call suicidal thoughts. Alright, she's having these suicidal thoughts. Because again, we read verse 7. That didn't just happen just one day. That was continually. Daily. Daily. You see these certain documentaries with uh with uh these little eating my kids. They get them bullied. Right? And they uh off themselves, hang themselves uh these different things. And that's a real spirit. This was happening to Sarah. So continually you had spirits troubling her. And what did she do? She fell upon her knees and cried to the most high. She didn't um just lean after her own her own understanding. No, she besought the Lord first. It says, reading on. It says, and why should I live? But if it please not thee that I should die, command some regard to be made of me and pity taken of me that I hear no more reproach. So the prayers of them both were heard before the majesty of the great God. And guess what? Your mo the Most High is going to hearken and hear your prayers, if you will, beseech him again in truth and in sincerity. You can't uh, stress that more enough. At your lowest, the first thing you want to do is call upon the Most High. That's what we've seen with David did in 1 Samuel 30. And that's what we've seen Sarah do in Tobit, the third chapter. The first thing she did was call upon the Lord. All right. Verse uh, 17. It says, And Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is, slacking. That is to scale away the witnesses of Tobit's eyes. And to give Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, for a wife to Tobit. So it's like to Tobias, the son of Tobit. And, the, and to bind Hasmodeus the evil spirit, because she belongeth to Tobias by right inheritance. It says, and I said on that, right, that's all I want. But the point is, is that the more she continued to beseech the Most High when all hell was breaking loose, she didn't lean upon her own understanding. That's when the Most High began to bless her. Let's go to Sirach, the second chapter. All right, let's go to Sirach, the second chapter. Sirach chapter 2 and verse number Sirach 2 and 2 it says set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble that's the point the Lord said make not haste in the time of trouble when you making haste in the time of trouble that's when your mind is racing you thinking you're thinking about a thousand different things instead of first and foremost calling upon the most high all right. So like, so the Lord said, make not haste in the time of trouble. What if David would have made haste in time of trouble? He would have got his whole army overthrown. What if Sarah would have made haste and just offed herself? Guess what? Her father would have had no uh, inheritance. All right. His name would have been rooted out the land. Right. And nobody would have known of him because he would have had no inheritance to carry himself on. All right. So that's why the Lord said through the spirit, make not haste. Why? Because when you sit down and you think upon the problems, and you bear it on the shoulders of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Or you put it, you, you build your burdens on Yahweh Shah, you bear that cross. Guess what? That's when the Most High is going to come down through the Spirit and strengthen you. Just like how he did to Yahweh Shah in Matthew, the fourth chapter. And Luke, I believe that's the 22nd chapter. So let's read on. Let's go to the, uh, let's go to Luke 22, actually. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. All right, this is the book of Luke, chapter 22, 
and verse number 40. Luke 22 and verse 40. It says, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, now we read this account. This is right before. Uh, this is right when Judas he went to, he went to uh, to snitch on the Lord on the left hand side and wickedness. He went to betray the Lord, and the Lord knows the things that he has to befall. He's sweating blood, getting nervous. Right, it's the hour of temptation. He's uh, he's his mind is racing. Right, verse twenty four or forty two. It says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It's like in verse 41. It says, yes, yeah, like I read that already. Verse 43, it's like it. Right, Luke 22 and 43. It says, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. So the minute Yahweh Shai got down and he prayed before the Most High, went agony. Guess what? An angel from the third heavens came down and strengthened him. Now, why is it that we're reading all these accounts? The Most High strengthening these people the minute they call upon his name. The minute they're at the lowest, they beseech the Most High, thanking the Most High, glorifying the Most High. And again, you want to line your life up with the precepts. Or you want to make sure that you line your life up as best as you can to our forefathers. Because again, we read about the elect. King David's the elect. All right, Sarah's the elect. Not necessarily the 144, but these different uh, righteous men and women that we read about, they're the elect. The one third that's going to be saved, whose names are written in the book of life. So you want to make sure you pattern your life after the men and women that we read about. How they move through the spirit. And you want to make sure you're moving in that, next, in that exact same spirit. Reading on, it says, And there appeared an angel from heaven strengthening him, verse 44, And being in agony. He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I mean, so Yahweh Shah was such an agony, so nervous. All right, so, so uh, what's the word? Right, yeah, nervous. To where he had sweats of blood dripping out of his pores to the ground. And what happened? An angel came down as he prayed more earnestly and strengthened him, man. So you want to make sure... Whatever you're going through, again, beseech the Most High first. Don't lean upon your own counsel. Don't lean upon your own understanding. Get down on your knees, face the east, and throw up those prayers. All right? Let's go to the book of um, 2 Kings, chapter 20, and verse 1. Let's go to 2 Kings, chapter 20, and verse number 1. You had Hezekiah. All right, you had the mighty brother Hezekiah. That might be 2 Kings 20. 2 Kings chapter 20 and verse number 1. It says, come. It says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now, if you don't know about Hezekiah, he's one of three kings that was righteous. From, his, from the start of his reign all the way to the end. Whom the Lord considered perfect. Uh, you had three kings. You had David. You had Hezekiah. And you had Josiah, three kings that was perfect from start to the end before the eyes of the Lord. So we're going to read about Hezekiah. It says, in those days, Hezekiah, Hezekiah, so in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So the Lord said the prophet Amos, to Hezekiah and told him to set his house in order because he's about to give up the ghost. All right, and kings were known for doing that. You read that in Tobit, the last chapter before uh, Tobit gave up the ghost. He instructed his sons. King David did that. First Kings, the second chapter, he instructed him before he gave up the ghost. So that was a, a high ordinance within our, uh, within our nation. We didn't know in verse 2. It says, Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Yahweh, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. 
So as he's getting this news that he's about to give up the ghost from his illness, he damn turned to the wall and he threw up a prayer. So he was so ill, he couldn't even get up. So what did he do? He turned his body, probably in agony and pain, and he beseeched the Lord. And we're going to see what the Lord did for that reason. It says, and it came to pass after Isaiah was gone out into the, into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, so and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Right, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up unto thy house. So get so like, thou shalt go up to, unto the house of the Lord. So because he beseeched the most high of the Lord, said so he's gonna heal him. All that uh you about to give the ghost and the Lord did away with that. We're gonna see how much the Lord increased Hezekiah for just simply beseeching him when it was needed for. It says, verse 6, and I will add unto thy days fifth. 15 years and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake so guess what he added to his life 15 years 15 years all because he besought the Lord first and foremost that's deep man imagine you at your lowest you about to give up the ghost call upon the most high you get 15 years extra added into your life all because your heart was perfect with the most high and that's a, and that's another reason why you should want to be perfect to the lord right to pray upon him in truth and sincerity because when you at your wits end and you need that boost the lord is not going to be unrighteous to not give it to you right if you've been truth and sincere let's go to psalms 37 real quick the lord said he will never forsake the righteous all right psalms 37 I believe that's verse 25. Salak, yeah. It's the book of Psalms. Chapter 37. And verse number 25. It says, I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So David, through the Spirit, said he's been young. Now he's been old from his young age to his old age. Not one time has he seen the righteous forsaken. Name one time in this whole book, right? In this whole book, have you ever seen a righteous man forsaken? Right? Have you ever seen a man that was full of the spirit, fervent on fire, and the most High just neglected him, threw him out the way, forgot about him, and just said, yeah, I know you're perfect. You sin not. It was perfect all the days of your life, but you're not getting the kingdom. No, that never happened. Why? Because the Most High is not an unjust God, right? The, the Most High is a God of justice and judgment. You read about you read about that in uh, Psalms 19 and verse number nine. So guess what? The more righteous works you offer up to the Most High, that's the more chance that the Lord again is going to answer your prayers when you need Him the most. All right. I'm on a uh, timestamp right now. Probably get a few more precepts. Let's go. To, let's go to Second Kings, chapter one. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 1. So you had Hezekiah on the right-hand side. The first thing he did when he fell sick was that he called upon the Most High. He put his stress and all his cares upon the Most High. And do you have a king on the left-hand side? All right. You have uh, Salakia. Yeah. Right, you have a king on the left-hand side. You have Isaiah, who, who fell sick as well. Now we're going to see the spirit between uh, Ahaziah and and King Hezekiah the righteous. Again, Hezekiah is only one of three kings that the Most High. Let me get that real quick in Sirach 44. That the Most High deemed perfect. Sirach 44 and verse number three. Or 46. Sirach 46. Salak, let me find this. Sirach 49. All right, Sirach 49 and verse number three. Verse four. It's Sirach 49 and verse four. It says, all except David, Hezekiah, and Josiah, right? Ezekiel is uh, Hezekiah in the Greek, right? And Josiah, which is Josiah, were defected, for they forsook the law of the Most High, even the kings of Judah failed. 
So he said, all except these three men, they failed. And they forsook the Mosiah. So guess what? Hezekiah, we, we read about Hezekiah. Don't read about him as this, as if he's some average Joe. No, look at him how he is, as one of the righteous. Someone that you should try your hardest to pound on your life after of, through the Spirit. So this is 2 Kings chapter two, chapter 1 and verse number 1. It says, Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber and was in Samaria and was sick. And he went slucking. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. That's off. What do you mean go and inquire of another god to see if you're going to overcome this disease? Right, so again, we see the first thing King David, I mean, uh, King Hezekiah did, he besieged the Most High when he fell sick. And Hezekiah fell sick and he, and he besought an idol. That's off. Right, and again, on a, uh, on a deeper fold, let's say you do fall sick on a physical level. Don't open prayer. Don't, don't first, you don't want to uh, just seek out medicine. That's the first thing. No, throw up a prayer. Then go and get your uh, your medication or, you know, if possible, your prescription and things like that. Here it is. You wake up with a headache. First thing you do, you don't you don't uh, pray when you first wake up. You just go downstairs, run in the kitchen, and you try to find an Advil or something like that. No, you want to pray. You want to beseech the Most High first. You got some people that say, oh, that's over righteous. You want to you want to pray first. Yeah, you want to throw up a prayer first. That's Psalms, uh, that's wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. The most high heals all things. Not a, a herb, a modified plaster through the spirit. So what this man did was when he fell sick, he besought an idol. It says, reading on, verse 3. It says, but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, arise, go to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, it is not because there is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Baalzebub, the God of Ekron. Now, therefore, thus saith Yahweh, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. So guess what? This man judgment was written, set a stone. Because he didn't want to beseech the Most High first. Because he wanted to go to some false god and not beseech the God in Israel. The Most High already, the Most High wrote his judgment right then and there. Death. You're going to die upon that bed. Hey, if he would have did what Hezekiah did, guess what? He could have he could have possibly possibly been added 15 more years. Just like Hezekiah. Again, you have both men in the same predicament, the same position. And you see what the righteous would do? And then you see what the wicked would do. Again, you got some people say it's, it's over-righteous if you call upon the Most High first to just, just go get the damn medicine. It's off. You're getting these different black seed oils, and that's good. You know, you want to make sure you take care of your body. But first and foremost, you want to beseech the Most High and not make these medicines or these different drugs your idol, man. And extol that above the Most High as if that's what heals you and not the Lord. So I'm going to jump down in the same chapter, in the same uh, chapter, to verse number. All right, I'm going to jump down to verse. This whole thing, fire. I'm going to jump down to verse 16. It says, and he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub. Right, this is Elijah getting up with him. Right, because we read this chapter. After he heard that Elijah was sent out to prophesy against him. He kept sending companies of 50 and Elijah would cast fire down from heaven and burn up each company of 50. So until the last time, he begged Elijah to come humbly, then bowed down to him and Elijah came. So this is, so this is uh, Elijah in front of the king after giving them his judgment. It says, and he said unto him, thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the God of Ekron, is it, is it not because there was no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord, 
which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. See that? So the most I took his spirit. He didn't add on some 10 years, 15 years, 5 years. You know, at that point in time, he didn't want to beseech the Most High. So what did the Lord do? He cut him off. And that's how the Lord get down. You don't beseech the Most High first, he's going to cut you off. All right? He's not going to just always uh, just give you more grace and mercy. Right? You know, you know, you got certain people that just go off and expect the Most High to just grant them mercy all the time. All right? No, you, and this thing, you don't want to just expect grace, expect mercy. All right? You want to, you know, you of course, you know, we need grace and mercy through the Spirit. But the first and foremost, you want to strive to, you want to strive for perfection. A man that's striving to be perfect, that's hard on himself, that's getting on himself, is gonna make sure he's moving in the spirit of our fathers. Right? So when that time does come, the most I can't have that grace and mercy upon him. Right? Versus the wicked that's just doing God knows what, not beseeching the most high, not praying, not fasting, right, not inquiring of the Lord. Guess what? Those men, you know, those men not gonna make it. And we see an example right here. Slocky. Slocky. All right, real quick, let's go to Joshua the ninth chapter. Let's go to Joshua nine and thirteen. Let's go to Joshua chapter nine and verse number thirteen. And when you read uh, First and Second Chronicles, you read uh, First and, uh, First Kings. You see how much David inquired of the Most High in every little thing before he went to war. He got a certain counsel from his men. And again, it's good to get counsel in these different things because that's another way of inquiring out of Most High. And you see how much David, his spirit was to always beseech the Lord before making a move. Whether that, that was a prayer or he got counsel from the elders, from the judges, or these different things. It's different ways to beseech the Most High, but nevertheless, you want to make sure that you're doing so. Or else you can get yourself jammed up and the company that's around you jammed up as well. So this is Joshua chapter 9. And verse number 13. Con Joshua 9 to 13. It says, And these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent, and these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason a very long journey. So when you, when you read Joshua the ninth chapter, you had these uh men that came from one of these cities that Joshua was overcoming. And they faint and they uh they put on like a costume, right? They put on these clothes as if they were on a long journey, that they travel from some from uh some far country. So when they so when Joshua goes into Gibeon, he wouldn't destroy those people. Right? And we read this whole account, they end up making a covenant with Joshua. So Joshua wouldn't destroy them. Why? Because again, Joshua thought that they was just some uh randoms from a far country. Because the name of Israel was being spread abroad throughout the whole earth at this time. Through the spirit of the Most High that was one Joshua. And the, you got something called the conquest of Joshua. When you go into that history. And how he's overcoming these different kings. The Philistines, not the Philistines, but um, the sons of Canaan around this time. Fulfilling Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. All right, so it says, we didn't know in verse 14. And the men, it's like, and the men took of their victuals. And ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. So when these things came upon them, it said they took not counsel at the mouth of the Most High. And that's off. Right? God forbid so you just let a stranger in your house. Because essentially these men were strangers. And they just took them in because of what they wore. And what they said that they were. Just lying. And because they had pity upon these men. Alright, they had uh, some type of damn uh, comfort for these men. They didn't take counsel of the Most High. Jumping down to verse 24. This whole thing really fire. Uh, jumping down to verse. Let me see what I want. Uh, let I'm going to read verse 20. It says, This we will do to them. We will even let them live leaves wrath be upon us because the oath which we swore unto them, right? And they made an oath that they wouldn't put these men to death. So when we read this chapter, you know, they were actually made uh, slaves because Joshua couldn't put these men to death because they made an oath. That's oath. Here it is. You're making a covenant with a stranger. A stranger turns out to be your worst enemy. 
Now you can't put them to death because you done made an oath with the most high that you want to do. Now you can't break that oath. Now you just jammed up with a damn heathen in your house. And that's the, uh, really, that, that's the background of this uh, account that through the spirit, they didn't beseech the Lord. Now they have heathens living within them for comfort. That's like an Edomite. An Edomite freeing himself to, uh, to, uh, to get some type of, some type of job. Here it is. He's your worst enemy. Right, you're not wise to perceive it because you didn't call upon the Most High. You made an oath with the Lord. Now you got to eat in my living with you, and he's just your servant instead of you putting it in death and righteousness. And that's the position that Joshua was in when you read Joshua the ninth chapter and the rest of his men. So again, all things you want to make sure that you call upon the Most High and truth and in sincerity, whether that's in a great matter or a small, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham Yahusha. I'm gonna get these last two closing precepts. This Sirach. Chapter 42. I mean, uh, Sarai 34. Right? Sarai 34. And verse 30. All right. That's the book of Sarai. Chapter 34. It's like another 34. Let me go to, uh, it's like Baruch 428. That's what I want first. It's the book of Baruch. Chapter 4. Verse 28. It says, for as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so be in return, seek him ten times more. So as it was our mind to go astray from the Most High, to be in wickedness, to be in folly and vanity in the world, going off constantly, the Most High says, seek him ten times more. So in the last days, you want to have your spirit seeking the Most High ten times more than you ever are. Again, all hills breaking loose in the world. Right, you have the brick alliance steady growing and increasing damn near every day. You have countries leaving NATO, leaving Babylon, waking up and getting off that uh that damn uh nasty drink that Babylon's been giving them. And every nation from the smallest to the greatest is turning on America. So this is the best time to come into this thing and to beseech the Lord ten times more than ever. Let's go to Sirach 43 and 30. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 43, and verse 30. It says, When you glorify Yahweh, ex exalt him as much as he can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for you can never go far enough. And no man can go far enough when it comes to serving the only true power, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Wumalak, Hatazadak, Yahweh Right, but with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in its own. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Wamalakia, Shai, Kumya Shalom.